WrestleMania is done, but the road goes ever on and on. I'm Chris Wolf the Wrestling Vlog, who always tells it like it is. Congratulations, WWE. A number of people I sure thought, uh, I'm sure thought it wouldn't be done or that it shouldn't be done, but you did it. WrestleMania 36 is in the books and was one of the most talked about WWE pay-per-views in history. Sure, it had its bumps. Black and Lashley springs to mind. But others made up for it. I thought the Firefly Funhouse match was hilarious, for instance. Loads better than if seen and why it actually had a match. And with any luck, this will put Cena out of the WWE for good. Well, as Jack Nicholson said, Batman, if you gotta go, go with a smile. <laughs> now, why it's after his old protege, Braun Strowman, and the Universal title makes sense to me. And I hope Roman Reigns comes back to make the fight for the primary title much more interesting. On the other side, of course Drew McIntyre was going to win. And I called it when I said Drew would kick out of an F5, or several, and Claymore kicked the holy hell out of Lesnar. Let's just hope Lesnar doesn't sneak his way into money in the bank. As for whom Drew's next opponent will be, we don't know. Because last week we got the Big Show trying to steal the title from him 25 minutes after he won it. Failed, of course, but I really want to know who's tops for taking Drew on. Seth Rollins, perhaps? Missed all three women's singles titles in my picks. Bailey and Becky Lynch are still in charge, but here's hoping Shayna Baszler gets back in the mix soon. And the Sasha Banks Bailey fallout will be fairly soon, I think. Right after Tamina fails to beat Bailey after beating Banks. Oh, and Charlotte actually became NXT champ? Well, rumor has it that Rhea Ripley had trouble with her visa and was sent back to Australia until the pandemic is over. Io Shirai, please beat Charlotte ASAP. New Bliss Cross would win, though, so that's something. Last man standing? Ugh. Edge waited nine years to get that match? If it had taken place in Tampa, I promise you it wouldn't have been a last man standing, and it sure as hell wouldn't have lasted over half an hour. Same thing goes really for the Kevin Owens-Seth Rollins match. I'm glad it was one-on-one, -on -one, but I wasn't really buying it. In Tampa, it would have ended with a DQ, but KO just had to restart the match, didn't he? There is such thing as trying too damn hard, guys. Now, the match of the weekend for me was actually the triple threat ladder match for the SmackDown tag titles. Kofi Kingston, Jey Uso, and John Morrison did things I have never seen done in a ladder match. They used the ladder so dynamically, and the ending was just nuts. With Kingston and Uso grabbing the holder, followed by Morrison just ripping the belts off of it. <laughs> Hats off to all three of them. I don't think this Friday's triple threat will be better, but here's hoping. And if I had to pick a close second, it would be the Boneyard match. Doubtful this would have happened in Tampa, but I'm glad that it was changed to this. It essentially was a movie disguised as an outdoor buried alive match. And it hit all the marks for an Undertaker match. Even with the OC and several weak-ass minion styles, couldn't survive the supernatural badness of The Undertaker. I just hope, hope Taker finally calls it a career now. Otherwise, I guess we'll see him in Los Angeles next year. All in all, I went 9-9 nine and nine in my picks. But despite the empty arena, I was actually liking it in parts. Again, kudos. It didn't have to be that good, but it was. So, now what? 
Well, apparently having the POTUS as a loyal friend and true is doing wonders for Vince. And it seems the WWE Performance Center will stay open and more importantly, broadcast Raw live as advertised. NXT and SmackDown will probably be taped and everyone will have to go through a screening just to get in the building. And Money in the Bank, recently canceled in Baltimore, is still going to happen in Orlando. Hopefully it's a much smaller scale. They really did try to stretch WrestleMania out a bit thin last weekend. As for me, well, since the storylines are back, I'll try to keep these vlogs going weekly. And next week, I'll bring back the rankings. But if I skip a week, please be aware that it's because there was nothing that week worth talking about. And if I somehow get sick, I'll let you know about that too, God forbid. Oh, and I was right about the XFL not even lasting as long as the AAF last year. Vince, booby, give it up. Stick to what you're good at. I'm Chris Wolf with the Wrestling Vlog who always tells it like it is. Stay safe. I'll see you.